We are back in Sandpoint, Idaho today, and I wanted to discuss some of the important things that I think that uh, you might want to know before making a move to the great little town of Sandpoint, Idaho. We're going to talk about, we're in niche.com today, we're going to talk about some of the different grades that were given for a lot of these different categories in Sandpoint. And we'll just see if there's something there that uh, resonates with you. Maybe something you didn't know, or maybe it might give you a reason to want to move there, or maybe a reason to not move there. So anyway, these are, I'll, I'll mix in some of my points of view, but most of this is just coming from research that we dug up. And so we're going to talk about Sandpoint, Idaho. <laughs> first time to the channel then go ahead and subscribe below tap the bell so you can be notified every time we talk about all the different things going on up here in the North Idaho area hi I'm Reed Wilson with living North Idaho life and today we're talking about Sandpoint Idaho we're we're trying to bring content every week about different areas up here in the North Idaho area uh, and we are talking to people every week, every day, people just like you that have questions and that are thinking about a move to the North Idaho area. So if you got any questions or you're planning a move in the next two weeks or two years, give me a call, shoot me a text. Uh, me and my team would be happy to help you out and talk to you about your goals of moving to North Idaho. Today, we are in a beautiful Sandpoint, Idaho. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the grades that we have here in uh, the Sandpoint. We're in niche.com. And uh, it's a, a, a wonderful resor resource. You know, if you're looking at other areas, niche.com, it'll go in, it will grade schools, it will uh, give you some great background. So it's a great resource for anywhere here in the United States if you're trying to find out some information. But today, we're in there and we're talking a little bit about a Sandpoint and uh, uh, Niche has graded it as a B. And so let's talk a little bit about why it's a B. And uh, I'm just going to go through some of these categories here. And so, so the first one is the schools. And here we talk about some of the different schools up there. We've got uh, Washington Elementary, rated number 55 in, in all of Idaho. Northside Elementary, rated 64. Sandpoint Middle School, number 44 in all of Idaho. Uh, Kootenai Elementary, 92. Lake Ponderé, oh, that's the alternative school at 53. Hope Elementary at 162. It's, it, it, that's interesting. They didn't grade, oh, a Sandpoint High School. They gave it a B minus, but it didn't. Uh, it must not have hit the the top, you know, 100 or, or 200. However, I, I don't know why it doesn't have a a great or, or you know a uh, best public elementary school or, or high school. I have heard good things about the Sandpoint High School. You, you know, I I actually live down in closer to the Coeur d'Alene area, so you know, other than watching kids and, and nephews and whatnot play against you know in the sports they do have some good sports uh, programs up there but you know that's one of those things that if you want me to do a little little deeper research you know we can certainly do that uh, let's see I was gonna see here jumped in academics 67 percent proficient in math 40 percent average SAT 1190 average graduation rate 86 percent ACT 26 let's see I don't know if that that gives you the information you want but like I said I, I could you know we can do a deeper dive best public school teachers in Idaho number 74 at 193 best high school for athletes in high school number 49 of 153 like I said I think they have some great athletic programs so so yeah anyway they, they rated us, whoops, let me get back here. Washington Elementary, A minus, Northside, A minus, Sandpoint Middle School, B plus, 
B plus, B, and then as we saw, there's B minus for the, the high school. So they, they are up in that upper area anyway, so, so that helps out. All right, let's go to the next one, which is housing. Let's talk about the real estate there in the Sandpoint area. And they're showing medium home value at uh, 410, 200,000, medium rent at uh, 1,039. Uh, it looks like rent versus own, rent about 42%, own 58%. That to me is, is off just a little bit. And looking at uh, some different values for that area, that looks low to me. So I did some, some research average sales price as of july of this year we're into august of 24 so who knows when this video will be be watched but to give people an idea as of right now the average sell price there in the sandpoint area is seven hundred and seven thousand nine hundred seventy six dollars the medium sales price is five hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and seventy five so so this is off by quite a bit and, and i don't know if maybe they just don't have the same information as as i do you know of course we are a non-disclosure state so i don't know if that has anything to do with it but uh, that is showing low but i do think that that lends to having that c grade because uh, real estate is a little pricey there uh, you got a lot of people that want to be there you know it's all supply and demand there there are a lot of just beautiful homes there it's hard to find, you know, cheap and expensive homes there. You, you know, if you were just first time home buyer, there are some of those older homes. A lot of them are gonna probably need a little work, but you, you know, a lot of that, you, you're just not gonna see a lot in that lower price range. You can get into some condos that are right around that high to low 300,000 range but into a single family home, most of that is, is gonna be closer around that 400,000 range and up. And then of course, you know, you've got the, the lake, you've got uh, uh, the ski area. And so there's a lot of things there that lend to it being a destination area. And I think that holds some of those values up higher just because you know, people come there for the quality of life and all the things that all of us, you know, the reasons we came up here. But uh, some of that real estate has gotten very expensive in those areas. So something to think about. Uh, it's it's probably not the best place for those that are just trying to get started. It might be a little tough. Not saying it can't be done, but... And then you got some nice of those outline areas. You know, you can get down into maybe Kokolala or, or going north a little bit towards Bonners Ferry. If you were able to commute, uh, Bonners Ferry has housing is a lot less expensive over by Clark Fork or, or over into the Priest River area. You know, you do have a little bit of commute if you're working in that Sandpoint area, but there, there are some areas that do lend to having a little cheaper or less expensive housing. Let me put it that way. So next one, good for families, B, and I, and I think that's correct. And, and as you look at this, you know, you got outdoor activities, A minus, health and fitness, A minus, commute, A, weather, B minus, you, you know, the public schools being a B. So I think all that lends to being, being good for families. When, when we look at some of the, the diversity, let me see if I can find that real quick here. Here's residents. This talks a little bit about the diversity there. You know, they've got one word phrase describes the people who live in your area. Most people put friendly 60%, family oriented 20%, loving 10%, progressive 10%. You know, those are just you know one word that from people there in that area so you know here's some of the demographics looks like male to females pretty close and you, you, we've got a lot probably closer into that retirement you got 18 you know 55 and older 14 percent you know so it's it lends to more of an older demographic there so but those you know when you get up into some of these areas probably most of those families are grown and and kids have probably moved out but Look here, you got 
25 to 34, 13 percent, 35 to 44, 14 percent. You know, a lot of those age groups do have families and are raising families. And so I think that all helps lend to to that scoring. And so I, I have to agree with that. Good for families is a B. Jobs is a B minus. And I, I think as we look through in that area there, there is not a lot of, of you know, jobs in that area that, uh, you, you know, that lend to, you know, there, there's not the big Amazons, you know, it's not a big city. You know, as we look at Quest Aircraft, Life Care Center at Sandpoint, Bonner General Hospital, which are some of the bigger employers up there, you're going to have hospitality. You know, you got the ski areas, you got some, you, you know, some of the restaurants, you have, you know, a lot of the, the, the you know, the restaurants that cater people, you got uh, some of the hotels, that type of stuff that really lend to it being a destination place and, and having uh, people visit. So uh, I if you're looking to go there thinking, hey, I'm going to get a great job, you know, let's, let's remember, it it's got a population of 888.99, you know, and so it is not a huge area there, you know, in like the description here, Sandpoint is a town in Idaho with a population of 8,899. Sandpoint is in Bonner County. Living in Sandpoint offers residents a dense suburban feel and most residents own their home. In Sandpoint, there are a lot of bars, coffee shops, and parks. Many families and young professionals live in Sandpoint. Residents tend to be conservative. The public schools in Sandpoint are above average, so uh, that might kind of help. But uh, uh, as far as jobs, there is not, you know, unless you're into agriculture or, you, you know, some of those things, there's probably not a lot of jobs that lend to uh, really growing with the company. There are some of those jobs, but, but you don't have the jobs like you would in, say, the Spokane area or you, you, you know, Spokane's really where you're going to see that even in the down in around the Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene area. We don't have a lot of those big, but it's easier to commute over into the Spokane area from those areas. Whereas up there in Sandpoint, you, you know, you're, you're, you're probably about an hour drive just over to the Washington border. And then, you know, you could be another 20, 30 minutes into wherever you're working or more depending on, on where in the Spokane area you'd be looking at. So so keep that in mind as you look at you know your job base with a lower population and, and some of that just plan accordingly. Cost of living C minus and, and there again you you know anytime you get into an area that has a lot of tourists that is away from you know it's not like it's right on the I-90 so everything's gonna be a little more expensive getting it there, you know your housing there again you know they they talked about uh, when we when we talked about the housing with the the rent at a thousand thirty nine well well that's probably more of like a one bed one bath two bed one bath you know you're not going to be able to rent for a family if you need three or four bedrooms that is not going to get you what you're looking for. And I should have touched on that a little bit when we talked about the real estate, but, but just, just know that 1039 does not get you a lot in, in that Sandpoint area. So if you're an investor, it's a great place to have investment because there's always people looking for rentals. And so that's something to keep in mind. Outdoor activities, my goodness, you got everything there. I mean, if you're looking for an outdoor quality of life, then then Sandpoint has it all. I mean, you've got the lake if you like boating and surfing and, and uh, water skiing and, and all those types of things in the summer. You've got uh, mountain biking trails all over the place. You've got Schweitzer Ski Area that for skiing, snowboarding, cross country skiing, you name it, you can do it. If, you, if there's something you like doing outdoors, backpacking, hiking, it's all there. So I'm surprised that's not listed as an A plus, but that area there is just fantastic for 
outdoor activity and if you love being in the outdoors what a great place to uh, to, to spend some time let's jump up to crime and safety crime and safety based on it has a B minus based on violent and property crime rates calculated annually per 100,000 residents the I, I, I did some other research now this one's showing assault 63.6 murder 10.6 rape zero robbery zero burglary 286 theft 668 motor vehicle theft 95 according to neighborhood scout sandpoint idaho has an average of eight violent crimes per year which gives it a one in 1125 chance of being a victim some of the safest areas in sandpoint include the Elmira Samuels area, the Bronx Coble area, Dover, and Colburn. In March 2024, SafeWise listed Sandpoint as one of Idaho's safest cities along with Rexburg, Weezer, Fruitland, Kimberly, Shelley, and Rigby. All of the cities on the list reported zero murders except for Rexburg and Sandpoint, which each had one. And I have been through every one of those areas and I can tell you without a doubt that Sandpoint is the most beautiful out of all of those with the most to i believe offer as far as outdoor activities but that might give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect as far as crime there the you know it, it's pretty low statistic that you'd probably ever be involved in in any type of a crime in that area nightlife like i said they have a lot of restaurants they've got a lot of bars coffee shops all that type of stuff you know, so if you love getting out and, and going and having a nice dinner or going and having a glass of wine or going and, and, and just, you, you know, wh whatever it might be, what nightlife might look like to you, uh, I think you'll, you could find some of it there. And, but it's just such a quaint little town, you know, it's, you, you know, these little tourist towns, these little, you, you know, they, they just have a lot of neat little restaurants and whatnot. And so it's certainly worth getting out and walking around downtown area there and, and checking out some of that nightlife. We talked a little bit about the diversity, you, you know, that we'll come back here, D the diversity. I don't know there's a whole lot more to say on that. You know, there again, like we said, the, you know, mostly older crowd. So conservative, you know, not a lot to say there, but like I said, you know, smaller population and just, you know, a lot of people have those North Idaho values up there. And so keep that in mind if you're coming from other areas that the North Idaho, you know, like I said, tend to lean more conservative in their thinking. And, and, and many of them are very, very upfront about it. Maybe that's the way to put it. So I don't want to go into a whole lot about that, but uh, Idaho is a, is a red state and, and the, most of the people up there in the North Idaho area are very passionate about trying to keep it that way. So moving on to weather. Weather is a B minus. And uh, they do get snow there, you know. Elevation in the Sandpoint area is around that 2300 range. You know, they get snow in town. They, you, you know, but they're built for snow. So, you know, the, the plows get out there early. You're, you're most likely never gonna have trouble in town getting stuck. Now, now if you live outside of the outskirts or you want a cabin off in the woods that could be a different thing because they do get some snow like i said there there's the ski area there so uh, there's a reason they put a ski area up there because they get some good snow and they uh, you know because of the mountains but uh, you, you know we've talked about the weather and some of our other videos here in the area and it's all the same summers up there are absolutely beautiful uh, summer you know really kind of starts in that uh, would like to think it really starts in July. You, you hope in June, you know, you have one day that's 85, the next day it's 60. So it's hard to plan in June, but uh, we're always very hopeful. And then July hits and, and then it takes off. And then we get weather up over 100 degrees on many days. And then I roll into August. In, in August can change, you know, today was mid 80s and uh, we're in the later part of August right now. September is still beautiful, but it starts cooling off towards the end of September and October. And then by late October, early November, you know, 
in my point of view, that's the time I hate the worst is, is to me, it's just, you get a lot of rain, it's gray and, you know, late fall, early spring is not my favorite up here in North Idaho. Winter, we usually get a snowfall mid to late November. It typically melts away. And then we get another, we almost always have a white Christmas. So by mid towards end of December, we start getting snow and it's sticking. And, and then about the end of February, early March, it's starting to, uh, to go away. You know, we'll start seeing some rain and stuff again. We'll get some snow and then it turns to rain. And, you know, and then by the end of March, you know, we're, we're kind of done with winter and, and, you know, late March, early April, that first half of April, we're back in that, what I think is ugly weather. A lot of people like it. I do like four seasons, but that's not my favorite time. And then we jump back into spring, which is just absolutely beautiful up here. So weather, they're shown as a B minus, and, and I don't know, know why they ranked it there, but I, I guess it depends on what you like. You know, we, we don't get down into the real cold weather a lot. You know, you're, you're gonna see a lot of that 30s and, you know, you know 20s and 30s. Occasionally you'll get down into the single digits and that, that gets cold, uh, but for the most part, and then like I said, we get as high as, uh, you know, in the, the low, you know, over 100, you know, 105, 110 in the summer. So those are things to keep in mind. Health and fitness. A minus, and I can see why. I mean, a lot of the people that love that area, you know, again, you got outdoor activities as an A minus. I think, you know, a lot of people come, like we were talking about, for the quality of life. And, you, you know, they love to ski, they love to hike and bike and, and, and all those things. And so, naturally, I think it just lends to uh, a lot of the population that, that, uh, are thinking, have that mindset and, and uh, love, you know, the health and fitness end of it. So the commute, they put as an A, it, it is pretty easy. I think getting around Sandpoint, you know, if you need to get from one side to the other, I think traffic flows very well. You, you know, the only downside would be is if you're commuting, I think like down into a quarter lane, you gotta go down 95 and depending on what time of the year, you know, you're either gonna battle weather or you're gonna battle traffic, you know, 95 gets busy, you got all that traffic comes up and down from Canada. You know, a lot of people camping and trailers and, and, and all that type of stuff, commerce. And so uh, there are other routes, you know, if you're cutting over into the Sandpoint area, but uh, there again, weather is always gonna be a deciding factor on on how fast you're going to be able to, to get there and, and what route maybe you're going to want to take. So I, I'm not quite sure why they give the commute an A. If all you're doing is commuting there in town, I get that because I, I think things do flow very quickly, very easily in that area. But uh, anyway, let, let's take a look at a few of the reviews there in the Sandpoint area. Uh, looks like most of them are, are excellent out of 55 reviews. You've got 23 excellent, 21 very good, and then uh, like six average, four poor, one terrible. But we'll kind of just do uh, some of the latest ones here. Uh, five stars. Uh, this one was two months ago. Nice place to visit for a day. Always enjoy my time there. Friendly and less crowded as, as Coeur d'Alene. It's just a nice ski town. I prefer Sandpoint over Wallace, but Wallace is nice too. Just not as much to offer for now, but I'm sure it will grow and improve with time, meaning Wallace. But Sandpoint pretty much has it all, something for everyone. Very green, very beautiful. Uh, here's another five star one. This one was uh, six months ago. Living in Sandpoint is a dream. I moved here with my significant other for a job opportunity. We both work for the Forest Service as wildland firefighters. All we can afford in the area is a camper spot, which suits us. There is a reason living here is so expensive. The area is absolutely breathtaking. We have both become quite familiar with the awesome sense of community brought to fruition by a quaint downtown area centralized by the city's beach. The forests are something to behold here, surrounded by incredible mountains on all sides with many bodies of water for fishers, kayakers, 
and family outings as well as multiple small uh, mountain towns surrounding the outskirts for short distance adventures. Uh, bushes ready for harvesting berries in the summer, mushrooms ripe for picking in the fall, hiking for all levels of adventure, an incredible ski resort that unites the community in a snow-filled wonderland. That's, that's a pretty outstanding review there. Uh, this one was nine months ago. Sandpoint is one of the most amazing towns to visit, especially in the summer and winter seasons. Its residents are so kind and helpful, and it is one of the most beautiful settings imaginable. Uh, let's just see. This one here uh, was a little over a year ago. Let's see. They only gave it a two two star. So let's uh, let's see what that one. Sandpoint used to be a wonderful small town. In the last five years, there has been a dramatic increase to the population in the area, primarily seasonal vacation residents this influx has substantially increased the cost of living in the area making it nearly impossible for local natives to survive one of the biggest problems the area is currently facing is a dramatic increase in, to property taxes i would like to see this impact lessened on local natives in the area it is extremely disappointing to see local natives being taxed out of their homes due to seasonal residents that do not consider sandpoint their home so I, I can understand some of the feeling there. You know, there is a lot, you know, I was talked about with the housing. Housing has really gone up. And with the price of housing going up, it has also substantially raised some of the taxes. And if you're some of these people that are on a tight or fixed income, I can see why that would be a, a lot of a frustration. Um, here's another four star or a five star, a four star. Here's another two star. Uh, that was back in 2022, three star. Uh, anyway, for the most part though, um, as you can see, people love the area. Uh, it's, it, it's got just some raving reviews. So anyway, uh, take a look at Sandpoint if that's uh, something that's on your list. I, I hope that helps give you a little, shed a little light on the Sandpoint area. If you have other questions about the Sandpoint area that, that we can answer, give us a call, shoot us a text, and uh, we hope to see you on our next video. Thank you.